Hey, welcome back to the Big Red Zone. We are very excited for today's show. Remember, new episodes come out every Thursday. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the like button on this video as well as all our other videos. You can also find us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Big Red Zone and tell a friend. This week, Pats get their first win. We'll break that down. We'll also talk about a couple other games in the NFL, do our picks of the week, waiver pickups, and some sock stuff, trouble in paradise. I know it's been a tough season, but it looks like the season just keeps getting worse and worse. So we'll break down some of the controversy in the locker room. All that and more on this week's episode of the Big Red Zone. Welcome to the podcast. This is the Big Red Zone. I'm your host, Big Red. As always, I'm joined by Danny Football. How are we doing, Big Red? Doing good, doing good. Played a little tennis today, a little behind. Fresh Played off the tennis. court. Yeah, fresh off, fresh off the uh, the old links, as they say. Um, no, it's not the links. It's the court, I guess. Um, yeah, hitting the old tennis ball around and uh, getting ready for this inevitable matchup with Paige. <laughs> uh, I will be ready for you, Paige. She doesn't listen to the beginning part anyway, so well, she probably won't even hear this, but uh, I'm coming for you. How about like you, that. Danny Football? I like the veracity. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you just gotta, you gotta, gotta go all in. You know. Yeah, I was telling you before we started, just counting down the days till UML starts. Uh, we got about 12 days. It's October. October 1st is the home opener. So, just waiting for college hockey to start up. We're uh, we got we got the national rankings in. We're 17 to start the year. So, good good uh, good little preseason so far. That's awesome. And I know. Uh, I don't even have to ask, but I guess I will. Um, UML is going to win the Natty this year. Or? Natty incoming. Natty incoming. Natty incoming. Well, let's let's get into it. Uh, let's get into our first segment, Weekend Recap. It's the Weekend Recap. So for weekend recap, we'll break down three games for the week. One of them being the Patriots game and the two other by selection. Uh, So what do we got for the first game of the week? So we're going with the Jets and Browns. A little bit of controversy at the end of this one. Nick Chubb has a chance to slide down. Kill the clock. Jets had no timeouts. Under two minutes. First down for the Browns. He runs it in regardless. I needed the points anyway, so I'll take it, but. Uh, unfortunately for the Browns, it turns into a comeback for Joe Flacco and the Jets. So Browns are going to Browns, man. Well, I'm quite disappointed, Danny Football, because yes, while I did have Nick Chubb and I was excited, I also had the Browns in a pick em pool for a survivor pool. So I was knocked out. Luckily, still had the buybacks. I don't know why I picked the Browns. I hate the Browns. I want everything except for Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt to fail with the Browns. I guess Jacoby Brissett. I, I, he's my boy from since the past day. So everyone but those three can just be terrible. I, I was I said it too. I can't believe it. I said I want them to go 0-17, and, and I picked them to win a game. I'm such an idiot. But you can imagine me watching that game on Red Zone on Sunday. They're well on and, their way to 0-17. And I, I I can't tell you how disappointed I was. I wasn't so much disappointed on the touchdown. I was disappointed on how they let the Jets not once but twice drive on them. And the New York Jets, what are we doing? New York Jets had the same record as the New England Patriots, by the way, too. So that, of course, was disappointing to see. Uh, what do you think with this uh, Jets team? Do you think, you know, this is a big win Joe, for Joe Flacco? This has just made me... I don't even know what this is actually. I know the answer to this. this is, it's not true because Joe Flacco is not going to play like this ever again, probably. Uh, throw Throws 307 yards and four touchdowns. That's never going to happen. The Browns defense just should be ashamed of themselves. Uh, but it begs the question, Danny Football, when our friend, friend of the pod, I might add, Zach, Will, uh, Zach Wilson comes back, do they hand the keys back to Wilson or do they give it to Joe Flacco? If he has, you know, we're looking at the Jets have a, you know, I don't know when they're coming back, but a two and one record. Even if he comes back next week, do you sit Joe Flacco after a 300 yards day with four touchdowns? 
I don't. I ride the hot hand. If it's Flacco, it's Flacco. If Flacco cools off, put in Zach Wilson. If he's hot, great. But I think you have to ride the hot hand. And then if it turns into a quarterback controversy, that's just kind of how the Jets roll. So, Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with you. It's tough to like, I kind of put it like this. I mean, Mac had more success last year than Wilson, but I kind of put it like if we had Cam Newton still, and Cam has a big day, that, right. you know, say Mac got hurt and Cam has a big couple weeks. He wasn't that great last week. Uh, but do they ride Cam Newton or do they go with Mac Jones? I, I don't know. I think I think you got to go. I think you're right. I think in this situation, we obviously this podcast is not a big believer in Zach Wilson. So no. uh, I tend to believe that I got to go with Joe Flacco in this one. Um, Bre- uh, Brees Hall gets in on the action he was had a pretty decent day talk about a day coming out party for your rookie first rounder garrett wilson two touchdowns 102 yards and eight receptions um that Corey davis touchdown was a joke at the end of the game uh that that the one not to tie it or go ahead but the one that before that before the onside kick the walk-in touchdown from Corey davis that was like a give up by the browns i that was a jo- this whole game was a joke i can't believe that they lost this game i'm so disappointed and my hatred for the browns just increased even more so uh so good riddance i got my buybacks for a reason i'm just helping <laughs> put more money in the pot so you know what the browns can stink but i hope the jets start losing too because that, that that doesn't make me feel too good uh that last turnover too from Jacoby Brissett was like, what are you thinking, dude? But good fantasy day for Nick Chubb. I'll, I'll take every good fantasy day I can get out of him. Amari Cooper had a, uh, like a big day too. Nine receptions, 101 yards and a touchdown. Uh, I don't know if I trust him in fantasy football yet. I'm kind of, I'm wavering, put him in, in the flex spot, daily football. I'm not going to lie to you, but I, I don't know. I, I I, I, I want to see more out of him with not him, but him with Jacoby Brissett. I kind of want to mm. see more out of that. I think when, when the scumbag comes back, I think he's going to be, I think they could be a little different. I think he could be a pretty good fantasy player every week. All right. You want to move on to the next game? Yep. So what we, we got this Buck saints. This is usually big reds, big uh, pick them, pick them week, pick them game, but uh, stayed away from this one. Uh, Tom throws a fit. We had a lot of more versus Evans. Evans is going to get suspended, but the Bucks start two and zero. Uh, I didn't watch a look at this game. All I saw was Tom Brady flipping out on the sideline. So I assume they were losing come to find out they were pretty much in control the entire time. So, uh, I don't know what Tom's doing. I don't know if this is how he's just going to motivate his team for all 18 weeks. He's just going to continuously throw fits on the sideline and get him get him to win games. But looks like Tommy boys starting to fall apart down there in Tampa. This is the ugliest. I think about with the Pats, Tom's last year. You know how we kept saying this is the ugliest 11 and 0 team we've ever seen? Mm. Like, we didn't believe in them. They were 11 and 0, and we're like, this team stinks. I don't know how they're winning all these games, but it was just they found ways to win. This Bucks team reminds me of a lot of that. Except, you know, I, I, they're a very good team. I still think they're in control of the, I still think they're going to be there in the Super Bowl but my confidence is a little shaken because I watched a lot, most of that game. I was on the red zone. So like I kept flipping on and off of that team, that game. And for the last two weeks, it just doesn't look like they have any like rhythm. The offense doesn't look good. Tom looks like this is the first time I've ever seen Tom Brady not look he looks like he wants to be anywhere but the football field. Like, it, I, not in a, like a way like he's not committed. Like, I know he wants to be there. There's no way a 45 year old man or whatever he is would want to be hit ten times in a game and keep right, getting slammed right. if he didn't want to be there. Like, I know he wants to be there, but he looks tired, dude. He doesn't look himself. Like, you starting to see the man. Like before, he's been like a robot. You're starting to see right, him right. as a person, a real person now. And he's still great. He's still, you know, the best quarterback ever. He's still top, top quarterback 
if you had to choose someone to run your team, like he's still a guy that you would go to. But this offense looks bad. It looks the same as it did week one, only Leonard Fournette couldn't run. Like he had no room to run. So the running game looked bad. It was a lot of three and outs, three and outs, three and outs on both sides. Like the same, it was like very much a defensive game. And it just, they kicked the field goal early. Uh, Saints, I think the Saints got the first field goal, then the Bucks got the field goal, and then it was just basically three and out, three and out, three, punt, 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 back right, and forth. Right. And I think there was a turnover in there. Tom Brady fumbles the ball on a snap. Bad. Uh, I I couldn't. I don't remember. I couldn't really see the snap because it was like flipping between two games. But yeah, dude, they look out of sync. It, it looks pretty like I don't know what they're doing. The good thing. The silver lining is the offense for a Tom Brady team and a Bill Belichick team always doesn't look 100% earlier in the season. Like, it always takes a couple weeks, to, t- a couple months to, like, to get the rust out. Tom Brady's record in September career, over his career, is far worse than his record in, you know, the winter, in December, you know, November, whatever it may be. So that's the only thing I'm holding on to. But they don't look – the Bucks look mortal, dude. And the only thing that's going to hold them over is their defense. Their defense is nasty. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's what's how they're going to win a Super Bowl is that their defense just carries them over the edge. But for the first time, I don't think Tom Brady can carry this team. I think he needs a lot of help. I kind of believe that Gronk's going to come back now by the end of the season because there's not a lot of weapons on that off- offense. At the end of the game, he was throwing to Perryman. And, you know, he has, we were talking about this team. Mike Evans is now out for a game. I don't know what's up. Uh, Julio Jones is hurt, and he's not the old Julio. It'll make a couple big plays that will be like, see, he's back. Other than that, who else is on the offense receiver wise? There's it, Chris Godwin's hurt. Like everyone's out. So, and Tom Brady used to be able to pick people apart with these backup leftover wide receivers, and he's not. And they're, part of it is that they got to make some plays too. I saw a lot of drops, and I think Tom's getting ticked at the play calling and drops and stuff like that. But I don't know. I my confidence is a little shaken on the Bucks, even though they're two and zero. Yeah, definitely not confident in them right now. On the other side of the coin, uh, the Saints. You know, normally I I started thinking, man, maybe I'm going to be right in my pick, but the Saints are one on one. I, I was kind of expecting them to be a little better coming into the year. I know we talked about it. I'm not I'm not scared of the Saints anymore. Like especially Alvin Kamara has been out. He's battling injury. He has this lawsuit over his head. I I just I don't know. The Saints I thought were gonna make a bigger splash this year. I think I can't remember if I, if I picked him officially as my comeback player, but I think I picked Jameis Winston as my comeback player of the year. Um I just don't see it with this team. I mean, I, I like the fight from Jameis. He's playing with like a fractured ribs and or four fractures in his back or ribs or something. I forget what it was. He has like a, a couple fractures either in his ribs or his, I think it's his ribs. And he's still playing through it, which I give him a lot of credit. But I, I, I don't know. I don't really believe in that team. Yeah, no, the, uh, the Saints are not the Saints of old. What do you think about that fight? I mean, it sucks for me because Evans is one of my wide receivers, so I'm not too happy about it. But, I mean, if you're going to defend your teammate, defend your teammate. Yeah. I was say, I was saying with the guy I was watching the game, it was so funny to watch. They went on a close-up of Brady when he was walking by. And he told me – I mean, they zoomed right into his face, and you could see what he said to Lattimore. And I've ne- I was laughing. I was like, this guy is 45 years old talking to 20 something year olds and calling him ridiculous names. Like it, it wasn't anything, it's was nothing really too bad, but it was just trash talk. But it, it was just hilarious to me that he's double his age and he's still, oh, yeah. still talking, yeah. talking a ton of trash. And then he just gets right in his face. I, I just loved it, dude. It, that, 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 I don't know. I love when Tom Brady gets fired up and starts talking trash to other people. It's like the when Bill talked trash to uh, what's his name when he when he told Thielen was it Thielen? Yeah, I think it was Thielen. Yeah, the, it was a meme, and uh, I just I don't know. It was funny, but yeah, Mike Evans comes off the top rope out of nowhere, decks Lattimore for the second time in his career, and uh, it was I, I enjoyed every minute of it. I'm a sports fan. I like there it. There we go. Okay. 
So let's move on to the Pats Steelers game. Pats get their first win. Um, what do you, what was your initial thoughts on this Pats Steelers game? Uh, I thought the defense definitely looked a lot better. Um, probably the, be- the easily the better of the two halves between offense and defense. Uh, you get that pick early on Trubisky. Um, Jalen Mills finally gets his first interception as a Patriot. Took a little bit, but he finally got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost had that scoop and score a couple of plays uh, earlier on Deontay Johnson, but gets called back. They said he was down. Um, the only unfortunate thing is that and I have it here in the notes is that the offense has to step up. I mean, you get that interception and then Mac turns around and immediately throws his own interception. Devontae Parker and him are just not on the same page. Um, it's always good to go on to get, go on the road, get a win, get that first one of the season under your belt. You know, you're one and one, you're right there in the fight. Um, but if the offense could find some semblance of cohesion, this team can actually make some noise. Yeah, and it's funny because I feel like we see it in flashes, you know? I feel like we see this offense drive and we see them make a t- – like Mac it's will make like first, 10. It's always the first series because they have it all mapped out and they do it and it doesn't – when it doesn't end in a touchdown, it's all for naught. Well, that's what I was going to say. I feel like they can't finish off drives. Like I'm no. looking at it. I'm like I'm looking at the offense. Mac had 252 passing yards and the running game at over 124 yards and you only score 17 points. How is that even possible? Like, I, I don't get how you score two touchdowns and have rack up 376 yards. You you had two receivers, well, one receiver over 100 yards with a touchdown. The other one, Jacoby Myers, had nine catches for 95 yards. All your offense is through A, that tells me two things. One, A, he trusts the guys that were here last year. He doesn't trust Devontae Parker. No. Like, is is he's not throwing him the ball. Uh, I don't know his target situation, but Devontae Parker. Yeah, I feel like uh, I think it's four targets, one catch, one incomplete, and two interceptions. Yeah, I I just they're not he either doesn't have trust or they're not on the same page. Like I, I don't I don't I don't see it, which is kind of nerve wracking because we both said I mean we were talking about it. I was like, wow, Mac gets a like a weapon to use in the offense. And he hasn't found a way to use it or hasn't come in. He's not on the same page. So, for me, for the offense, A, Mac, and I'm very, I'm usually, I'm never critical of Mac. I'm going to be a little critical here. He's got to clean it up. He's got to stop throwing picks. He's got to, he's like, there was one play he missed Humphreys. Humphreys didn't have anyone around him for 20 yards, and he looks off him, looks him off. Just give it to the open receiver, make a throw. And like the pick he threw was not really a good pick. I, I just, I think he has to clean it up a little more too. Like he's, you know, second year, he overachieved, I think his fr- his first year. And I really want to see him take that next step forward. Cause we were talking about it. Like we, we know, I mean, I think we both believe in him a lot. I think we both believe, or at least I believe he's the best rookie and quarterback in that draft. He's got to he's got to show it and he's got to improve and he you know he says all the right things but he's got to do it on the field. So you're right. I think the offense needs to work on finishing it, finishing off drives, finish, you know, finish with touchdowns, start putting six points on the board. But if we don't do that, I, I you know, I think we'll beat the playoffs again, but like we were saying, we were hoping to see if we can make a second round exit or make it to the second round, not an exit, but a second round, make it to the second round of the playoffs. If we can't finish off drives, I mean, we the playoffs are in question. So definitely a step in the right direction for the Patriots, but um, I'm still not – they need to start – and I, it's better, I guess. I, right. No, uh, you're it's right. It's a, it's a step in the right direction. The offense needs to find its groove. Um, the defense needs to just kind of hold pat. It's honestly overachieving right now, so hopefully that just stays where it is. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like, like you mentioned – they need to score touchdowns because you're not beating anyone just kicking field goals. So they need to start finishing these drives and actually started putting points on the board and, you know, next game's in Baltimore. So, you know, they're putting up points. So you have to be able to match them in that shootout. Yeah. Uh, I mean, are you still feeling confident in the, uh, what did we say? Nine wins? Yeah, definitely. One and one, one and one through two is 
better than I could have expected. Yeah, I when I originally did my thing, I thought they'd win against the Dolphins, but uh, I still have faith. Um, tough game against the Ravens. This is going to be a tough test for them, but you got to beat the good teams. We always say it, and you know the Ravens are coming off. We we didn't we're not going to talk about it uh, in our games this week, but that was a heck of a game uh, in Baltimore last week. Right, right. I mean they they're going to come off. They're going to come into this game fired up because they blew it against the Dolphins. They absolutely choked that game away. So who knows? Your in your division rival just beat them. So you got to go in there and beat them as well. So right, right. Any nerves about the uh, Dolphins this season? No, they'll come back down to earth. Think so? Yeah, I think so. I think they'll they'll come back down to earth. Water will find its level with them. Yeah, I think I think Tua. I mean, I mean, through three quarters of this game, it was controlled by Baltimore. They scored twice in the last minute and a half, I think, or two minutes. So, yeah, it was a total choke job by Baltimore. The other team, I did, I know, I know, we want to move on to picks of the week and stuff like that, but I want to say this now, and this is a crazy, crazy take, and I, I don't think too many people will agree with me, but I'm going to share this with you. I think the Detroit Lions will make the playoffs this year. Okay, all right. This team, if they figure it out, I think they're going to be nasty. And they have the reason I say that is whether people want to admit it or not, uh, Jared Goff is a more than capable quarterback. Everyone wants, I don't get it, but I think it's because he was a number one pick in the draft and everyone said he was supposed to be the best quarterback in the league. He's not, but he's still a good quarterback. Like he's still more than capable to help you win games. They got a great run, one of the best running back tandems in the league. Like between Swift and Jamal um, Williams, Mm -hmm. that's like a really good one and two running back core. Ahmad St. Brown, Amon Ross St. Brown, I mean, has come out of nowhere and is a top, he's making me look really smart for keeping him in fantasy football. He's he's quickly becoming a top young wide receiver in the league. And then you have TJ Hawkinson, who he hasn't even performed that great. And I still think we talk about him as one of the top five. I mean, you'd have the top three, but he's like arguably like the fifth or sixth best tight end in the league out of the whole 32 teams. So if they can figure their offense is more than capable of winning games, they're putting up points. I mean, they've scored, they scored 38, 35 points in the first game and lost to the Eagles and scored 36 points against the uh, commanders. That's I think going to go down, but I think they can win a lot of games. And I, I, I'm telling you right now, if the Patriots sleep on this game when they come into Foxborough, I think it's going to be a tough, tough game for the Pats. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm looking at their games right now. I think, I think the Vikings will end up winning their division. I just I like the Vikings more, but who knows with that. We could, we, they've yet to play their second game today. But, I mean, I think I like them a lot better than the Bears. I like them better than the Packers. Even I'm more worried when we when the pack when we play the Lions than when we play the Packers. Wow, I I do not fear the Packers at all, and I the I don't fear the Lions. I think we win that game, but if we roll into that game and just be you know think we're gonna roll over, the Lions are a decent football team this year. If their defense figures it out, which I think Dan Campbell can do, I think this team is gonna be very good. I'm I'm saying it outside. I think they're going to be a wild card team in the in the playoffs. All right, that's a write good, it down. I like that take. September nineteenth. Write it. Remember this. Mark my words. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into the next segment. Picks of the week. Picks of the week. For picks of the week, we pick uh, one game from this uh, NFL uh, weekend or week and pick uh, who we think is going to win. We are both – no, you, I lost last week. You had, the, uh, you had Raiders over Cardinals. 
They lost. I didn't even see the end of that game. Hard choke job by the Raiders. Oh, jeez. Well, that's disappointing. <laughs> uh, all right, let's. Jeez, I didn't even see. I didn't watch the end of that game. What do we think? What? What's your pick of the week? I'm going with Bills over Dolphins. I think. Um, I said it earlier. I think the Dolphins are going to come cra- not crashing back down, but I f- think they're going to come back to the pack. Two is not going to put up six touchdowns again in a game. Water is going to find his level, and the Bills are just too loaded. They're they're the one A in this division, so it's going to be Bills over Dolphins. I agree. I think it's going to be closer than I thought. I think I think it could be closer than I thought, like for the game wise. But I think the Bills will roll the Dolphins. They, I'll tell you, Tyree Kill wasn't lying about his coach needing a wheelbarrow. That guy has some guts, and who knows that if the Dolphins help us out against the Bills, maybe they. You know, maybe they can give us a hand in the division, but <laughs> I, I, I think you're right. I think the Bills are going to beat the Dolphins. I'm going Rams over Packers. Nice. You know, I I think, you know, the Rams kind of got their first one under the belt. Packers, I said, are fraud. Like, I don't, I'm not a big Packers guy. Everyone knows, like, this season, I just said that I think the Lions are going to beat the Packers. So, I, I, you know, I'm standing firm on that. I think Matt Stafford in this offense is going to start uh, coming together. We saw it even last game. Cam Akers started getting involved. A little closer than I would have liked against the 0-2 Falcons team that just couldn't seem to get out of their own way. But, you know, they got a two-headed monster with Daryl Henderson and uh, Cam Akers. They can use it right. If Stafford can cut out an interception, even though he lead the league last year and he just – can't stop throwing throwing the ball to the other team. Or they wear different jerseys, and you just learn to throw it to your own jersey team. Uh, I think they'll be okay. So, I'm going. I'm going to stick with uh, the Rams over the Packers. Nice. For waiver pickups of the week, I'm going with this guy. Should be taken in every league, by the way, for waiver pickups. I missed out on him in a couple leagues. Definitely go get him, especially in deeper leagues. Greg Dortch of the uh, Cardinals. And if you're saying who, this guy is a wide receiver. He's only rostered in 2.8% of leagues. And he's had double digit fantasy points the last two weeks. You know, we were kind of trying to figure out who would be the guy when DeAndre Hopkins was out, who would take a lot of, uh, you know, get a lot of targets. The first week he had nine targets and seven catches. This week he had four targets, four catches, and a touchdown for 55 yards. I think it's just going to – I think Kyler Murray trusts him. I don't – I think he gets open. It's a guy to stash. I think he's a good fantasy guy to stash, especially in deeper leagues. I like that. I was going to ask who, but you gave me me the full rundown right there. (laughs) Um, I'm going to go with Logan Thomas. He's 19.5, a little bit higher, but if you're looking for some tight end – some tight end depth. Logan Thomas is a good one. Solid start so far through two games. Carson Wentz is just slinging it all over the field. So if you're, if you're looking for a commander's guy, this is the guy to go to. Um, And, you know, tight ends are always kind of either plug in sparse or streamed. So if you want to just, you know, stash Logan Thomas, see how he does the next couple of weeks, might as well. I like it. I like it a lot. All righty. So let's move on to the, um, some Sox news. This week they released Kevin Pilecki, which I don't think went over too well in that locker room. Uh, but I don't know. They're making some interesting moves. I don't necessarily hate the move to get rid of him. I think he's a good locker room guy. But in the grand scheme of things, you know, Reese McGuire has been playing really well. Connor Wong's been playing really well. And to be honest with you, I think they may be your catchers for next year. I think that could, that could seriously be your tandem. I know people are going to want to believe that, you know, especially after he left, you know, Christian Vasquez is going to sign here in the summer, but I mean, sign here in the winter, but I don't think it's going to be Christian, but sure. But I don't, I, if all the names of the catcher tandem next year, one of them is not going to be Kevin Pilecki even before he got released. So I kind of get the move, but it didn't go over so well. So I heard, so I general reactions to that release, a veteran guy releasing of a veteran guy that was well liked in the locker. Yeah. I'm not too heartbroken over losing Kevin Pilecki. I mean, role guy, great locker room from what I've seen, but 
at the end of the day, this team needs better players that can play on the field. And that right now that's Connor Wong and McGuire and uh, McGuire. Um, it's, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. And if I, if I'm high in bloom, I, I need to look at this roster and really ask myself who, who is going to contribute next year. Who do I need here next year? Who do I not need here next year? How do I turn this around? Because I mean, Dave Dombrowski got fired less than 12 months after winning a World Series championship. So it, it is a quick hook here in Boston. So this guy has to figure it out. Because I know we like to call him, you know, oh, he's a genius. He rebuilds the farm system. You know, he does this, he does that. If the team's not winning, he's not doing much for anyone. So this is this is a big, big offseason for Heim Bloom in terms of turning this team around. Because if if we have another rough one like this, I don't know how long he's going to be here. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, two things that come to mind. And I think you're right. This is a huge, I think this is a make or break off season for Heim Bloom, like you said. I mean, we talk about being in a hot seat. The thing about him is, it's the same thing when people complain about David Dombrowski, I, which I'm not one of those people. I think when they hired David Dombrowski, what did we know about him? We knew that he was going to be, you know, he was a spend first kind of guy. He was, you were going to have one of the highest payrolls in the whole league. He was going to trade away your farm system and get top rated players now. And he was in the thought process of win now. He wasn't thinking about 10 years down the line, five years down, even a year down the line. He was like, what can I do for this team to win? And he did that. And then the year after when they were bad, everyone was like, well, this guy stinks. Why did he kill our farm system? Our farm system is trash. We got all these big contracts. We got this and this and this. We knew that when we signed up for him right. and he did his job. He signed up. He, he got us a championship. The same thing can be said for Heim Bloom. We knew what his MO was when he came in. He was a D- Tampa Bay guy who built up your farm system and tried to win that way by getting in farm guys and finding diamonds in the rough. And that's still his MO. He, you know, he still says that he said it a couple of weeks ago where, you know, his biggest regret isn't not landing the big free agent. It's letting guys in the system or in the organization that are those diamonds in the rough leave. He was talking about, um, what's his name? Kyle Schwarber. He was talking about Schwarber. He was talking about, um, you know, uh, Renfro. He was talking about those guys. He was kind of disappointed to let those guys go or trade those guys away when they already had those diamonds in the rough and he let them get away. To me, that doesn't make me feel good. Yeah, it's like Belichick. We we praise him for being this great finder of undrafted free agents, like J.C. Jackson, uh, Malcolm Butler. He finds these guys that are low draft picks and are undrafted free agents that come in and are game-changing players. But would we knock the guy if he could land a first-round draft pick on a wide receiver? (laughs) Like. I get that that it's totally a great trait to have. Like, and I, maybe I'm being, you know, a typical Boston fan that wants it all, but can he be good at both? Can he be good at, yeah, finding those diamond in the rough players that are great guys added to your team, but also be good at signing free agents. You're in Boston. The, you're the GM of the Boston Red Sox. You should be able to find, get these big free agent guys in or keep the free agents, big free agents that you have. And the fact that we couldn't re-sign Mookie, which people want to put on Heim, that trade, I don't put that on Heim at all. I put that on management because he came into a situation and they told him trade away Mookie Betts. That, what, he was kind of hands were tied. But I don't consider his hands tied with Xander, and I don't consider his hands tied with Devers. So he's got to figure it out. So that's just my two cents, my, one of my two cents on it. It's hard to be mad at them. I'm mad at the situation. I'm more mad at the ownership for this is what the path they wanted to go. They didn't want win first. They wanted to build first. And that's the difference. Dombrowski, win first. Uh, Bloom is more of a build the farm system, which is great for a team like Tampa and Oakland. It's not good for a team like Boston. So that, I'm, I think more of his the problem is with man, uh, ownership than – with Heim. Yeah, which is fair. The, which is fair. The other thing is, I mean, we agree is his whole 
like philosophy is like we said, find the guys that are diamonds in the rough, don't spend a lot, you know, wasting money on the money ball type like mentality. If he goes out and spends on the first day of free agency, all right, we sign Devers, Bogarts, and Judge. Now, I know that won't happen, but let's say we he does that. Does he look worse or better? Because he's going against everything he believes in and get, spending, spending, spending. Do you think people are going to be mad at that or excited about that, or is it just like – I think it, I it, think they'd be over the moon if you got those three guys. I think so too, but it makes you think like, Man, why didn't you do this last year when we had a chance to, or a couple of years ago when we had a chance to get Mookie? Why'd you let Mookie? Why didn't you stay last year to sign Schwarber? You didn't want to pay Schwarber the extra couple million dollars, and he led the National League in home runs. All fair you know, questions. I, Maybe that's what it takes for him to realize that he can't, you know, do it this way. Maybe, and, and I'm in the camp that I would be. I don't care what he does as long as it helps us win a. Right. win a world series and i'm more of a win now kind of guy so yeah he's done a great job he's built this farm system we have a guy that's ready to roll at first base i think with tristan cast this guy looks like an absolute stud cool we got our first base down go re- resign bogarts go resign devers and go get me aaron judge or a free agent type that's going to hit a home runs if he does that I don't care that he went back on his whole philosophy and he's right. trying this uh, new thing out, but I am a little annoyed that we couldn't have figured this out two years ago when we had a chance to keep your best ever. I'm going to say it, your best homegrown talent ever in the history of the Red Sox franchise. You let Mookie Betts walk, who's a generational talent. It's just, that's frustrating. And then you let, you know, a guy that you, he wanted to be in Boston and was going to be exactly what you needed in Kyle Schwarber and you let him walk too. So I don't know. I, I'm I'm kind of frustrated with the Red Sox right now because I feel like there's going to be a universal philosophy shift, and I wish it did it have to come to us being this bad to realize that we needed to make this shift. I I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's we're, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the off season. Let me let me ask you this question: Would you be mad if we don't resign? Bogarts, if we sign Devers and another big free agent, a home run bat. As long as like the, a judge. judge, as long as the takeaway is positive, I'm good with anything. As long as it's a positive move. If we lose both of them, that's a complete backwards move. Hundred percent agree. We got to sign Devers, regardless if you sign Bogarts. You need to you need to re-sign Devers, no matter what you do with Bogarts. But let's say they sign Judge. Do you care that we let Bogarts walk? It's a, if it's a one for one, I'd rather have Bogarts. Yeah, I think it, I think I think the fan in me who says Bogarts, but I think you know our main problem this year is home runs, and Judge brings fifty something of those to to whatever team he we were. We hit less home runs than Mookie and uh, the three guys we let, Mookie, um, Schwarber, and who's the other guy? Just Renfro. And since the All-Star break, they, those three players have hit more, or since in the month of July or whatever it was, they hit, those three hit players hit more home runs than the whole team, the whole Red Sox organization. Crazy. So I, I the fan of me says, don't let Bogarts leave. Like that's your that's your guy. Like if we're gonna hold on to guys like Sale, who hasn't pitched, hasn't really pitched a meaningful inning in three years, then yeah, we should keep Bogarts. But if we can get Aaron Judge, that kind of helps your infield, kind of figure out your outfield a little bit more, which has been kind of a cluster this entire season, and you know. Bogart is kind of older. He's probably leaning to a DH role anyway soon. So I don't know. It's definitely something we'll talk about in, as like when the season ends and you know we're breaking down free agents. But um, I hope that I hope he figures it out, and I hope Bloom will start signing guys uh, using that using that big payroll. That'd be great. Okay, so 
let's move on. Let's get into our final segment of the night, the people's topic. It's the people's topic, baby. People's topic. So for people's topic, you can write on our Instagram and Twitter page at Big Red Zone. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you want us to talk about. First, we have Jack. He says Pats yesterday. Big win. Big win. Positive momentum. Huge, huge win. I uh, completely agree. Keep building. Next one comes from Paige. She writes, is Mac Jones the long-term answer for the Patriots? He's the best option right now. Um, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I, there's nowhere else As they can really now. go. They're not going to trot Brian Hoyer out there. So, Yeah, and there's no one else that, like, let me say, I'd rather. I think we're in a better spot than a lot of teams are quarterback wise. Like, would you rather be 100%. the, you know, as much as I love Baker, would you rather have the Sam Donald Baker situation? Or Joe in, Flacco, Zach Wilson. Yeah, Joe Flacco, Zach Wilson. I, even Marcus Mariota. Like, I, I think we're in a way better spot than a lot of teams. We're not in the best spot no, compared to no, other teams, no. but I don't. I think it could be a lot worse. She also wrote, also tennis soon. Exclamation point. We'll see about that. Name the time and place. Name the time and place. All right, let's go to this one. I don't know what this means. This one comes from E Fitz94 on Instagram. Ed, he writes, How about them Shagwars? Is that just talking about the Jaguars? Is that just a nickname for the Jaguars? Uh, I guess oh, I did see I, the Jaguars are the only team to have shut out the Colts in the last five years, three years, something like that. The Colts have like the Colts only have three shutouts in some crazy amount of time, and it's all three of them went to the Jags. I know it was, they were talking about that on the broadcast. It was like the Colts have not beat the Jaguars in like six years, or and like whatever you said, whatever you said it was, and yeah, or maybe they they've been shut out or whatever every single time like they have like you said it was something like that i don't know but that is pretty that is pretty uh crazy that the that's their struggle team everyone has them true that was an embarrassing game for the colts by the way that was just he they shut down the jaguars shut down everyone shut down jonathan taylor shut down, matt ryan i mean looked terrible uh and trevor lawrence I think this is the best game I've seen him play all Probably, his whole career. Yeah. I think he, he looks really good, which is looking good for my uh, dynasty team. I'm ready to blow it up too. I'm ready to, I'm ready to just start trading everyone in that league. I'm so fired up about it. Uh, last one comes from Joseph underscore Celia. He writes, you are starting a franchise with either Lamar Jackson or Joe Burrow. Damn. That's um, a tough one. I think I lean Lamar just because he doesn't have the injury history of Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's already torn his knee, so I'd probably go Lamar Jackson, dual threat. It's close. I mean, I've been a Lamar guy since Louisville, so I kind of have to say Lamar Jackson. He also has an MVP. Joe Burrow doesn't, but Joe Burrow's been to a Super Bowl when he hasn't. Um, Man, that's a tough one. I think Joe Burrow is the better passing quarterback, like better passer. Lamar's definitely the better runner. I think I'd go if if I had to pick the situation, like having Joe Burrow with Jamar Chase. I I love that combo better than Lamar and any of the people. Oh, he, I'm going Lamar Jackson. Screw it. I, I don't care. <laughs> Everything brings me back to Lamar. I I I just um, that's kind of a uh, what's it called a bias pick i've been i've been a fan of lamar jackson longer so i'm gonna go with lamar so that's it for people's topic remember you can write on our instagram and twitter page at big red zone uh give us a follow you can also find us on spotify apple podcast youtube wherever you get your podcast make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button on this video as well as all our other videos my thanks to danny football as always for joining this week have a great week everyone